What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar with Cesar Gets Crypto, and we are talking about Clean Spark yet again, CLSK. This one comes to us at the request of the Fawns himself. Matt, we're doing this one for you, my man. Um, what a what a phenomenal couple of weeks. And I see I got a lot of new subscribers from that uh, that my last Clean Spark video that I made. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you all very much for subscribing and hitting that like button, commenting, participating. You guys are awesome. Um, I didn't throw this one in with the, with the uh, other crypto coins that I was talking about today. I know they were all requested at the same time, Fonzie, but uh, I just, you know, it's a stock. It's a Bitcoin mining company. Like, I just figure it, it deserves its own video, right? Um, and looking at this here, volumes increasing on the weekly. What a phenomenal two weeks we had. RSI is looking strong. We went down to the 40 level. This, for those of you that aren't familiar with the RSI, the 40 level itself and below is classified as the bearish area of control. Technically, if you're oversold, you're still in the bearish area of control, but this very literally is that. You bounced off of it, went straight up, you just straight up to the overbought zone. We're in there now. We still got time left in this week. We have two more days left and it's the end of the month. We're closing this month bullishly, guys. And there was something I was looking at earlier um, in regards to Clean Spark. I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about it today because I was actually looking at this earlier. Okay, so tomorrow is earnings, right? Earnings the, at the end of the month, 30th of November, right? It's the 29th for me right now. It's the 30th tomorrow whenever this next candle comes out. So let's just see how this thing does with its earnings. We'll go back, sure, back to here, whatever. Um, you know, you're coming down into your earnings, right? You came up a little bit, whatever, you're kind of like stalled, whatever, but you're coming down into your earnings and you continue to go down for a few days, right? But you, you continue to, you didn't pivot from there. Um, I mean, maybe on that day you had a green day in this bit of red, but more or less you continued to go lower. Um, here you are on a green one as well. Going up, sure, you might've had a red day or two, the days around that, but you still continued to climb in the direction preceding this, right, into the earnings. And then here, it's a red earnings, but whatever, that's not that's not the significance that I'm pointing out. It's that you're climbing into earnings, and then afterwards, you continue to climb. Here, we are going down into earnings, and then afterwards, yes, we went up a little bit, but really, afterwards, we continue to drop, right? Same thing here, continuing to drop before and then after. Here, you know, same thing, even just for a little bit there. You know, some some of these, this the ones like this and the first one that I showed where it's just like... Uh, it's a few days after that's less common. Generally, you get like weeks after that it continues in that direction, but we've been moving up for quite a while. So, so it might just be a few days, but who knows? It could be weeks, but we'll, we'll get to that. But going down here, been going down for a while, hit earnings, continued to bleed down, right? And now we're starting to go up. We hit earnings, we continue to go up. We are going down into earnings. We had a little, a little turnaround around there, but ultimately kept going down, right? Um, going this this one's kind of an off in my opinion right just kind of sideways whatever but here going down even though it was a green earnings it was positive uh continued to go down here we are going up into earnings it should be obvious what i'm going to say right maybe tomorrow is a red day maybe maybe the next day is a red day maybe we stall for a couple days maybe we don't maybe you know maybe we do uh phenomenal um i don't know what what that was some some just popped up saying it wanted to install but i exited i, I, I don't know um anyways looking at this here i would assume that after earnings that we are going to continue to go up right i think that this move that we're, we're experiencing right now um will come to an end you know at some point it's not going to go all the way up to a hundred dollars immediately i do think i do have a 100 dollar price target for clean spark in mind price target for clean spark in mind but for right now what i think we're going to do is set up a higher high right we've got these highs here kind of in this little come on now something like this right we've got our highs and then we've got our higher lows coming in and i think we're just going up to set a higher high right now and maybe it's maybe it's like this maybe these lines aren't exactly like this i don't know maybe it's if we wanted to make it more parallel, something like this, um, you know, this was like a fake out breakout. This this touches that line. This touches that line. I don't know, but then this one doesn't. Um, I like them to be parallel, but that's not, you know, that's not the the lines that we have connected here. Whatever, that's okay. Um, by the way, if this is a broadening wedge, if it's a broadening pattern, this is a broad broadening bottom pattern. Uh, 
statistically speaking, they're they're more often likely to break to the downside, but you can absolutely break it to the upside too. Um, in fact, I want to see one, two, three, four, five on your fifth touch. That's normally where you do break. So I actually would think that you do break to the upside. Um, I know that this is two touches here, but it's kind of like one move going up, if, if that makes any sense. Um, from what I know about broadening patterns, and in fact, generally with these things, uh, this kind of like double tap before it goes to one side is a thing. Like if it was if it was to the reverse effect, if we were to to go like down, it would like do a double bottom here. I don't, I don't know, something like that. I'm, I'm getting lost in the translations here, man. What I'm trying to say is I think we're going up higher. I do think we're gonna to continue to go higher. The weekly is just now getting into that overbought zone. Don't be surprised if tomorrow, uh, which is Thursday or the next day, Friday, if we see a little bit of stagnation, a little bit of, uh, uh, of some moves down, it's not going to be dramatic. Um, and if it is dramatic, it'll get bought up real quick. But over the next, I would say, week or two weeks or who knows, even more than that maybe, um, we will see some continued price growth to the upside. And I think before we see some kind of more significant turnaround, we are going to see prices at about 950 to 1254 And in my last video, there was a lot of emphasis on this level over here because that's your golden extension off of this recent high to low move that we just had. That's your golden extension. Not only that, but right now we're gear, uh, gearing up to break this purple line, right? This purple line that we found support on here, a little bit of support on here. We wrestled with it and then we found resistance on it and it sent us down to the abyss, found resistance on it here, sent us down to the abyss. We're about to break through that. So I don't think that we're going to turn around as soon as we break through it. I think we will have a nice little move um, potentially up to this golden extension. Not only is it a golden extension, but it's also a golden retracement from this macro high to this low here that we just, you know, formed back in December of last year, about a year ago, um, our 618, 618 literally lines up right with that 1618. So it's a golden retracement and a golden extension. And based off of this, based off of this overall fib, the fact that we went up to the 382, found support on the 236, and now we are back above the 382, the next, just like generally with how these things work, you guys, you know, fibs are more my area of expectation area of expertise than talking is um, than than most tools in technical analysis with this setup right here you reject the 236 you find support on your 069 you get above your 236 you find support on it you get up you find resistance at your 382 find support on your 236 again on this second break through the 382 it's like almost a guarantee that you're going to go up into this zone here um, with a heavy emphasis on this 618 area. I do think you're respecting the fibs more or less. Um, I would expect 1256 to get hit and you probably do wick a little bit above it. Guess what Guess what else is up there? Right here, this like previous resistance area as well. So um, even a little bit of support right there, previous resistance right over here. You know, there's a lot going up, going on up there, a lot of confluence. So um, regardless of how much of a shakeout we might experience in the next couple days or at any point up, up to that line, I do think that this move right now, what we're seeing, if this was a move up, this was a move up, this is a move up, I think this is a move up to here. It's going to be one of the bigger moves that we've uh, experienced. Worst comes to worst, uh, we get some kind of like lag phase like this for a month or two, and then we continue that move all the way up to that 1250 area, to, uh, 1270 area, um, or I guess, no, that's 1250 to $14 actually, potentially. But uh, I do think we're on our way there right now. And I think, you know, this is this is really just the beginning. The daily RSI is looking real strong, real hot. I know it's in the overbought zone, but look look here, guys, right? The last two times that we were, we were up in this overbought zone, we at least made it to the 86.9 level. Here we are at 83 right now. If we were to see some kind of turnaround in the next couple days, some stalling, that could give us enough uh, time to cool off a little bit and then continue to go higher in the RSI um, and then a lot higher in the price as well. Um, real, real quick. Come on now. Is that, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, man. You just broke straight through your 618. Like, it's... It's on like this. This kind of look right here off of this fib. These areas are an expectation, right? It's not. It's not like maybe we hit it. Hopefully we hit it. You know. Oh, I'm, 
close my eyes. I hope, please, please let it know. Like it's, it's gonna happen. Like it's, it's nothing's definite, nothing's certain, nothing's guaranteed. But guys, this, whenever you break through your six one eight like butter on the first attempt, this is like a likelihood, a very strong likelihood in my experience. So, um, at least nine forty five in a very short amount of time. Like maybe uh, by the end of the first week of December, right? May, maybe before halfway through December, but but I do think that we are going to see this price in a matter of time as well. It could be by the end of the year. Maybe it's at some point in Q1 of next year, but uh, all that to say, man, I think, uh, I think I might just end it there. Let's see. Delete all these lines. <laughs> Very strong one-hour RSI, man. And you do have bearish divergence. Look at that, right? One, two, three, four highs three lower highs, right, in a series of four highs. That's triple bearish divergence, nothing to be messed around with, even on one hour time frames. Where this divergence formed was back here at this like little area of uh, resistance here. You're at 657 now. Don't be surprised if we make a move back to 570 or 560 to close the week out, um, maybe to open up next week, right? We are coming to the end of the month tomorrow. We might, and it is earnings day, we might have a very bullish finish. Um, but soon, probably within the next, I'd say like three stock days, I would, I would expect that we see some kind of stagnation and maybe it's not within the next three. Maybe it's all three of them. Maybe it's five days, something like that. But, but soon we're going to see some kind of stagnation, um, because we've just been going up, man. We've been going up for now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row. I guess we haven't been going up for eight days in a row, have we? They, they all look green, but this day here is actually negative. It's it's in the green up here, but it's negative 1%. You can see you closed lower than this one here. So you did have a red day here. Here, you had a neutral day, technically, right? So, I mean, it hasn't just been straight up in a line, but you get what I'm saying. We've we've been moving up relatively unchecked. Going back to about 550 to 570 shouldn't scare anybody. Uh, it's an opportunity to get in at lower prices. Um, but with that being said, don't be surprised, you guys, if if this thing uh, by the end of this week is at like prices above nine dollars above this high here. One way or another, I do think before we see some kind of major like pullback like this or like this, uh, we are going to be above probably above twelve dollars. And in a very short amount of time, I think we're going to be above nine dollars. So uh, that's all I got, man. That's all that to say. That's really all I got to say. So yeah, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more. We do check in on Clean Spark every now and then. This is one that I personally own and have options in as well. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see what this thing does, man. I'm really excited to see what this thing does. Anyways, take care, everybody. Have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.